dear brothers and sisters. I thank the Lord and I thank Bishop George Rimando for this opportunity to celebrate Mass in the third CBCP PEC National Convention. To all of you who have come, maraming salamat, dagang salamat, damang salamat, ha? for giving time for this grace-filled event. Something I sincerely believe is very significant in the journey of our local church in the Philippines. I believe you have come and certainly the Lord will bless you in many wonderful ways. Amen. I learned who were the shaders this morning and I said to myself, ang swerte naman natin, swerte man naman ninyo, no? Having heard the sharings of no less than his eminence, Cardinal Quibedo, Bishop George Mando, Father Picardal, no? And of course, the stories of your very own co-juniors, the stories of each one. All of these are graced moments and stories, experiences, reflections I know that will become part of the growth of the PEC in the Philippines. And so once again I say congratulations for such a wonderful experience today. Of course starting yesterday, not today and tomorrow, even up to Saturday. Because much of what I thought are important ideas and Vatican II, PCP II, and, and BEC had been shared. Allow me just to underline some important uh, realities, I believe, and a personal note, no, worth uh, also reflecting just for today. The gospel speaks of the kingdom of God and I know that all of us are convinced that in many small and wonderful ways we are striving that the kingdom of God would truly happen, would truly be built in our midst. And so, Tungod Kai, as I said, you have had such comprehensive sharing from no less than as Bishop Kibedo and Bishop <coughs> I mean, Cardinal Quibedo and Bishop George and Father Picardana. Let me just point out a few things I thought uh, might be of, of help to deepen our, our appreciation of the PEC and the challenge of appreciating Vatican II, the cult of being community of disciples, and of course the cult of being Church of the Poor. I often quote, Pope Benedict the 16th when he said the best interpreters of the doctrine are the saints I say this because if we just look back for a moment before Vatican II the last to be canonized saint was Pope Pius X and he died he became Pope in 1903. He died in 1914. Meaning from that time, almost 50 years later, was Vatican II celebrated. So he was the last Pope to be canonized saint. When Vatican II happened, October 20, 1962 was the opening. December 8, 1965 was the closing after Vatican II. The one who opened it, John the 23rd, is now a saint. The one who followed him, Paul the Sixth, is now blessed. And the one who had implemented much of Vatican II, Pope John Paul II, is now a saint. No? In such a period, no? after Vatican II, we had such, to me, such holy and, and zealous leaders, servant leaders in the church. And if we want to know, and if we want to listen, and if we want to be assured 
of how to interpret the doctrine, then we can be rest assured. When we read John the 23rd, we are reading the teaching of a saint. When we read Paul the 6th, we are reading the teaching of a blessed son to be a saint. When we read the teaching of John Paul II, we are reading the teaching of a saint. What better assurance than to be able to know these are people, saints. John Paul II visited the country. We have seen some of them. Tingali may selfie, selfie pa, no may picture pa na. And they are the ones teaching us. I just mentioned this because I thought the impact of Vatican II no, has been so significant. It is admitted this is the greatest religious event of the past century, Vatican II. That's why when we reflect to the 50 years after Vatican II, we know no, we are looking reflecting on that most significant or greatest religious event. John Paul II would say, no? Vatican II is the compass by which to take our bearings in the vast ocean of the third millennium when we want to know where to go. Take our bearing from Vatican II. I'm sure this morning you had realized as well that the greatest event that happened in the Philippine church was PCP II no? in the last, of course, uh, 50 years. January 20 to 18 of February 1911. For almost a month, Something like 490 participants were there in San Carlos Seminary Complex. And it is admitted that PCP2 is the first ever plenary council in accord to the revised canon law of 1983. Like the Philippines was the first to hold a plenary council as a way of implementing Vatican II and the Code of Canon Law. That's why what we're saying is if we link together these two important events, then we know the place of PEC. Because it was during PCP2 that from our own language we say we canonized. We put that solemn owning of PEC and we were saying that the BEC is a new way of being church. And it is in the perspective of defining the church through to the spirit of Vatican II, the spirit of renewal, the spirit of updating adjournment or adaptation, or if you want, modernization, that we pose two questions. Church of Christ, what do you say of yourself? Among the many meanings, we say we are a community of disciples. We are a church of the poor. And in Vatican II, and what do you do? We say no. we reach out to the world the hopes and joys, the struggles of the world are our own. Let me end with, with a connection to what we have emphasized as Church of the Poor. I know it has been also uh, elaborated to us. Let me just connect it with the forthcoming International Eucharistic Congress in, in, in Cebu because it's barely a little like two, two months from now. And for those of you who are coming, maayong uh, pagabot, malipayong pagpasakop, January 24 to 31. 
But I mention that because even in the document, just to, to uh, siguro underline that spirit of becoming church of the poor, the document there says three key invitations. Una, those of us, especially, we often say, us shepherds, must lead a life of simplicity. If we want to be true to the spirit of being a church of the poor and for the poor, lead a life of simplicity. I often quote the former Archbishop of Palo. See, Archbishop Muloy would tease me because he said, Pagtawag daw sa Eastern Visayas, Unta mo parok ako kuno, pagipugnan niya ako, no? Kaya yung una-una ako kuno sa Palo, pa ako, no? Anyway, but the Archbishop of Palo has a beautiful saying, We must live simply that others may simply live. Number two, we should engage in active intervention for the promotion of the situation of the poor. If there is one Pope that we have seen speaking and doing this dictum, we are again privileged to have this wonderful Pope, Pope Francis. Both in his own person, speaking of simplicity, speaking of reaching out for the poor, doing things, alleviating for the alleviation of the life of the poor, we are again blessed with his person. Watching the presentation of the Nakapaburka group. It's so touching how they are able to gather strength and hope from the onslaughts of Haiyan because of faith and also because of the support, the help from many other people. It's so encouraging and touching to know that we have many good friends. And notice both Christians and non-Christians. In fact, like last Sunday about generosity, I, I, I made mention about an aspect of giving because Chuchi Foundation, you heard about, you know, that foundation. At the end of the year, the leader was saying, Yes, thank God we had helped a lot of people. But also, you should thank the people you help for giving us the opportunity to help them. What a beautiful reminder and that disposition of, you know, helping those who need. Thank those you help for the opportunity given us to be able to help. And finally, the church has to take a prophetic stance against negative consequences of economic and cultural globalization, against environmental dangers, etc. The latest encyclical of the Pope, Laudato Si, and environment, I think, is also a good point for reflection in our BEC. How to protect, promote our environment. In Eastern Visayas, they know what happened to Ormok. They know what happened to Ginsa Ogun. There's no need to elaborate. Because there were less trees, or because we had cut trees and not planted as we ought, then nature has its way of getting even or reminding us. PEC has to be mindful the church of the poor has to be mindful of how we should take care of God's blessings to us. So just for today, I, I repeat, I know you are blessed with many of these reflections. I underline a few things which I thought you know, might, might help us appreciate that we are indeed a PEC. 
I'd like to end by underlining what a great brother, leader in the person of Francisco Clapper underlined about BEC because he said, no, if there are many dimensions of BEC, unity and diversity, no, equality and dignity, sharing and participation, he said, to me, to him, the key element that makes BEC as it should be is participation. I'd like to end with this note because to me, to me, when I think of BEC, it is reminding you, our dear lay people, thank God that you realize it is your privilege, it is your duty, it is your role to participate. For many years, the church has been, quote-unquote, mostly, you know, clerical. But now with BEC, you know too well, this is our church, your church. And if you think for a moment that the two saints in the Philippines are lay people, so far, you know, lay people, then you know that it is a way of saying, may your tribe increase. Please, sometimes despite the difficulties that, that you find along the way, some of these difficulties may be posed, you know, by, by some of us now. <laughs> but, but, you know, uh, this is your role, your privilege, your, your duty as well, you know. Coming from the Lord, participation, key to be easy. Kanyong tanan, who believe because God is calling you, then we own this basic ecclesial community as a new way being church. Dagan kayong salamat. God bless you.